Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In the previous episodes, I've shown you already how to do assembly editing. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys, this is prepping to do, do a little bit more kind of intermediate level editing. And that's like understanding some of the tools that you're gonna be using inside of your timeline here. Yeah, in the assembly edit, we showed you how to kind of take clips from your project window, put it into your source monitor, do an edit point on them, in and out points, and then drop it into the timeline. That was the assembly edit. You're just basically getting the shots down into your timeline to tell the basic story. So for this uh, part, I'm going to go up to my little arrangement workspaces here and I'm going to go under editing now that I've got the assembly kind of finished. I didn't do the full assembly edit all the way through from beginning to end of the, of the movie but that, that is what I recommend doing first is doing the complete assembly edit from beginning to the end of the movie and then you go down to your timeline and start fine tuning which is now what we're, we're building up to because I want to show a couple tools that's necessary uh, to understand to be able to do this this sort of editing and then we will move on to that that kind of intermediate level editing here where we go down inside the timeline so range this by editing so let's show those tools really quick so, and uh, this is your toolbar right here and the tools i'm going to be showing right now is going to be our selection tool which is also a trim tool and then there's a couple tools down here if you have these little arrow these little bottom right hand corner arrows in these little windows that means this uh if you bring your mouse over and click on it and hold it down it will expand it and will show several tools that's kind of hidden within that one little tool right there if it doesn't have that arrow then it doesn't expand it's just that single arrow right there the, this is your kind of main tool here and if you ever start trying to do things on your timeline and it's not working it's probably because your selection tool has been deselected and something else has been grabbed here but this is also called a trim tool so let's move inside the timeline and show you what the trim tool does the roll tool and the and the ripple tool well then we'll move on to the next episode anytime you edit a clip down into, into a timeline you typically have what are called handles on the edge of that clip let me show you an example here i'm just going to grab this clip i'm going to copy it command c or control c move it over here in command v to paste so now i have that clip right here i just wanted to show you uh this little clip right here where she gets up looks at the clock and rolls over and here's a creek outside the door uh, so this clip recorded for much longer than than is down in the timeline so this thing will have handles if you move your selection tool to the edge of a clip here uh, it gives you this little red arrow and this is called the trim tool and what this will do is if you click and drag it's going to extend that clip there which means now it will play longer and that wasn't and I didn't want that portion of the clip when I put it in the edit but still if you need to trim it that's how you trim it you extend it so now the clip is much longer I'm going to undo that command Z or control Z and same thing if you can you can grab the in point or the out point and as long as you have handles you can extend that clip outwards and it shows you the new thumbnail of, uh, of what's happening there of the, of the trimming there or you can grab it and drag it inwards like this or you can shrink that endpoint. So you can shrink the endpoint or extend the endpoint, and you can see the thumbnail up there, what it's doing to show me what my new uh, endpoint is going to be. And same here on the out point. As you drag it, it shows a little thumbnail and shows you what your and shows you what your new out point is going to be by dragging this left and right. One thing to keep in mind that you can um, you can only extend these clips as long as they will go till the till they stopped recording or they started recording. So if I grab this, let me zoom out. I'm hitting minus on the top of the keyboard. You can use minus and plus to zoom in, zoom out. I'm going to grab the edge of this and drag it over. And there, it, there's the end of the clip right there. That's where they hit the button to stop recording right there. So if we go to the end of the clip, you'll notice this is the end of the clip because it has this little teeny triangle. Uh, to the top right hand corner of that clip right there. That means that is the extent of that clip. If you don't see that, that means it still has handles on either side. So let's move this out here, drag that and see. Now that's the beginning of the end point right there. If you drag them both out, that's the beginning. You got the little triangle up here and you got that little triangle up here. That means that's when they hit record. That's when they hit stop. Now, if a clip is butted up against something, uh, it will not, it'll hit into it and it will not let you extend it further past that clip because it's butted up, it's slamming into it. It's almost like, like hitting into a wall right there. If you move this up, you can hit option arrow up with a selected clip and it will move it up a layer. And now there's nothing to run into it. So now I can grab this. So now I can grab this edge here and trim it and it will trim it. Uh, past this clip because I don't have anything to run into it. And I can drag that as far as it will go until I either run out of uh, footage or it hits the beginning of the timeline. It looks like it hits the beginning of the timeline, so it doesn't, it's not able to extend it all the way. I'm gonna undo all that, put it back in. But just keep that in mind if you're trying to shrink a clip or extend a clip. If you can shrink it, if there's nothing to hit into it like that, that's easy, you can always shrink it. But you can't extend, you can only extend it until you run into a clip. So I'll show you a couple tools that uh, will help you to uh, trim that and push everything else down. And that's gonna be called the ripple tool. So the ripple tool is in this little menu right here. You hold down your mouse. You click on this and hold down your mouse and expand the menu. Right now it is on the ripple tool. And then we've got the roll 
the roll tool as well. Or they call it the, uh, Premiere calls it the rolling tool, but I, uh, I've always shortened it, called it the roll tool and roll edit as well. But you have these little shortcuts as well. You have the letter B and the letter N on your keyboard to select those as well. So I never really even go over and click on this toolbar because I just always use shortcuts. So if you need to, if you need to uh, choose your selection tool, you hit the letter V. Watch this. It chose my arrow tool. That's my selection tool. Hit the ripple. If you need to choose a ripple tool, that is B. And N is right next to that on the keyboard. So that's ripple and roll. So B is ripple and N is roll. And you can see the icons change there. Let's go on to ripple and talk about that right now. Now what the ripple tool does is it will shrink or extend an in point or out point while not affecting the adjacent clips. And, and when I say that, it will while not affecting the, the adjacent clips in or out points. So basically it's like doing this. Let's, I'm gonna choose my arrow tool, letter V. I'm gonna select these. Let's say I wanna extend this clip right here into this area here without affecting these clips. I'm gonna move these clips down so I don't push into them. And now I can grab this and trim it out and find out, let's say if I want it just where she lifts her head up like that right there and I'm gonna stop and I let go. So I trim that to right there. Uh, now I'm going to select this dead space in between and hit the big delete key or even the small delete key, uh, the backspace key or the, or the large delete key at the top of the keyboard and it fills the gap and pulls everything else down. It deleted that gap and pulled everything else down. All those moves that I did right there are considered a ripple move. So I'm gonna undo that, undo, undo, undo. So that's what the ripple tool will do. We'll kind of do that all in one move. So I'm gonna choose my ripple tool, hit the letter B, and now I'm going to extend this clip. And what this will do is it will bring up uh, two images. It's going to bring out this clip's, since I'm pointing the arrow toward this clip, it's gonna bring up this clip's out point and the adjacent clip's in point. But you'll notice the in point is not changing. I'm gonna grab this and drag it to the right and wait till she sits up just a little bit. There we go. And now I let go. It shoves everything else down. But notice while I'm doing that, undo this and do it again. As I'm doing this, look at the right hand uh, picture up there. The the right hand clip's uh, in point is not changing. All that do all it's doing is changing my out point, and then it just shoves everything else down. If I do it the opposite way and drag it in like this, and then when I let go, it drags everything else down. That is called a ripple edit. And once again, it'll affect a clip's in or out point, see, and if I want to do this to the end point, I can go to the other side and do it to the end point. If I drag it this way, it pulls everything else down to compensate. If I extend it like this, it pushes everything else out. Okay, so let's move on to the roll tool. The roll tool, so I'm gonna hover my mouse over this, hold it down, and go to rolling tool. So the roll edit or the rolling tool is the letter N. So let's say I'm on my arrow here. Let's click on my trim tool. You can hit the letter N and watch my arrow here. It changes to the roll tool. So I'm gonna click on my arrow heel here and show you what basically, I'm gonna do all the moves that constitute a roll, or a roll edit. So let's say I want to shrink this one right here. I'm gonna grab this and drag it over here. And if I wanna grab this one and extend it, I, I drag this over to compensate. Rather than fill the gap and pull everything else over, notice I changed my in point and my out point at the same time, simultaneously, essentially. So let's undo that, undo that. And the roll tool does that all in one move. So the letter N to select my roll tool. Hover right over, see if you move over in the middle of the clip, it has a little cross through it, which means it's not gonna do anything. So if I move the mouse over this edit right here, and I click and I drag to the left, look what it's doing now, look up at my two windows. It is shrinking the left-hand window's uh, out point while extending the right-hand window's in point. So I just basically shrunk this out point while extending this in point. So you can do that on any one of these edits here. And you can see that it's like shrinking one while extending the other. And you can see the picture doing that up in the top. You have your two ending, it has your two ending frames wherever you decide to let go. Your, in, your new out point and your new in point. With that being said, just to finish up here, uh, some of the reasons you might want to use your ripple tool over your roll tool is a, the ripple tool is an excellent tool to uh, use for matching a shot, matching continuity from shot to shot. Because you can do that to both the, both your clips here. Let's say, as I play from this clip, watch this. I'm playing here, this is intentionally mismatched, but watch this. Uh, she reaches out to turn on the light, and the light's already on in this shot. So that's a mismatch in continuity. So what I can do is I can grab this clip's out point and drag it over, and right when she clicks on the, on the light, and turn the light, and now we have the light on in both shots. She reaches out. On the light, now the light's on. And in this shot, you can barely see it, but her hand is still up on the light right there. But if you needed to match that as well, it is matched, but if you needed to grab that, and let's say her hand is off of it, like right there, I see her hand go away. 
you can use your ripple tool to match that shot. And once you get a shot matched, the roll edit is, you, is a great way to say, well, I don't want the edit to happen here. It's matching now, but I want, the, I want the, to stay a little bit longer on this shot, so I can grab this and roll edit it over to the right. And I just extended the length of this clip, so now we have a little bit more. We dwell on this shot for a little bit longer. She turns on the light. We're on it for a beat longer. And then we move away and her hand moves down. And that's a, that's still a match. So it still matched the timing, but the roll edit make, helped determine where you wanted the edit to actually occur once it has been matched. So that's the selection tool, the roll tool, and the ripple tool. In the next episode, we'll start showing you how to trim and fine-tune your assembly edit.